of IBM. Can I get a witness that you won't trade nothing? Can I get a witness that you won't trade nothing? Sometimes when I'm by myself, sometimes when I'm all alone, I think about what God's brought me from. He brought me through ups and he's brought me through down. And then somebody asked me, what would I do it again? My answer would be, I don't feel no aim, no way tired. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me here. I wouldn't trade nothing. I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey now. I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey now. I'm on my journey now. And I wouldn't. It gets hard. And I won't for my journey now. And I won't for my journey now. Come on and bless the Lord. Good morning, St. James. These are your church announcements. Immediately following the morning worship service, don't be in a hurry to leave. You're in for a treat. Today is our Taste of St. James Soul Food Luncheon. Mm -mm -mm. You're in for a tasty treat. The WMU and Brotherhood will meet Tuesday at 6 p.m. The Sanctuary Choir will rehearse at 7 p.m. Wednesday, we will have Bible study, prayer and praise, and the Youth of Standard will meet at 6.30 p.m. March 8th, we are the host for the Odessa Ministerial Alliance Lenten Luncheon and Worship Service. Our speaker of the hour will be Pastor Larry Hood of the Lutheran Church of the Risen Lord of Odessa, Texas. There is a $6 cost for the luncheon and the public is invited. Our church is asked to please support this great event. One Way Baptist Church of Round Rock, Texas has invited us for their Pastors Appreciation Service scheduled April 23rd, 2017. We have calculated the total cost per person to be $100 per person. And there is a deadline to turn in your money of April 5th, 2017. If you would like more details on this event, you may contact either Brother Leo Gatson or the Church Administrative Assistant, Sister Claire McQueen. Thank you. The Kiros Prison Ministry is seeking volunteers who would like to go and minister to inmates in the Lanau Unit Texas State Prison in Fort Stockton, Texas. If you have an interest or have questions, we have brochures in the church foyer on the hospitality table. Or if you would like, you may contact 432-889-1882. Again, we have brochures also available in the church foyer on the hospitality hospitality table or you may contact 432-889-1882 for any questions or, or information about this ministry. Again, thank you for your interest in advance. To be in the know and know what's going on, please read your church bulletin, check the News You Can Use board for information and services here at SJMBC, area churches, and community events here in the Permian Basin. This will conclude your weekly announcements. And always remember, God is always in control. Have a blessed week. Good morning. <clears throat> Giving honor to God, Pastor Bull, First Lady Bull, Reverend McNeil, St. James members, visitors, and friends. We like to take this time to acknowledge our visitors. I do have two visitors cards this morning. If I, when I call your name, if you would please stand. Correction, I have three. I have a Miss Jackie Smith um, from Smith 
um, Texas. I'm sorry, of Littlefield, Texas, if you would please stand. <laughs> I have a Mr. Ricky Smith of Baytown, Texas. He was invited by Melvin Watkins. And I have a Miss Sharon Bailey of Odessa, Texas. She was invited by Sister Hodges, Susie Hodges, if you would please stand. Would any of you like to have words this morning? Do we have any other visitors that would like to stand and have words this morning? Well, we the members of St. James would like to thank you for joining us this morning for worship. We are aware of the many options available to you here in Odessa. If we can be of any assistance to you, please let us know. We'll be happy to help. At this time, if you would please stand again, Pastor Bull along with the St. James family would like to present you with a very special welcome gift. Thank you. You're welcome, you are welcome in the house. Feel free, lift your hands, celebrate. This is the day, you are welcome in the house. Come on brother. You are welcome, you are welcome in the house. Feel free, lift your hands, celebrate. This is a day, you are welcome in the house. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. You are welcome in the house. Feel free. Lift your hand. Celebrate. This is the day. You are welcome in the house. In the house. You are welcome in the house. In this house. You are welcome in this house. Oh, Amen. What a time, what a time. 
that's possible but it is possible and when we get together we're gonna have a time amen so right now we're gonna get together and worship God through our giving if you would please stand why do we give How do we give? When do we give? Where do we give? To whom do we give? Together, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6 and 38. Repeat after me. Faith cometh by hearing. 
and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. You may be seated. We are now in the hands of the ushers and the trustees. blessings that you bestowed upon us thank you for allowing us to be able to participate lord we thank you for all your blessings and we thank you for these gifts that have been received we pray that they be used for the ongoing of your kingdom here on earth in jesus name we thank you amen one more time praise the lord Singing Mary, oh, Mary don't you tell Martha not to mourn. Singing Mary, oh, Mary don't you tell Martha not to mourn. Pharaoh's army, army, they got drowned in the sea. I said, Mary, oh, Mary don't you tell Martha not to mourn. Hey, singing Mary, oh, Mary don't you tell your sister Martha not to mourn. Oh, Mary, oh, Mary don't you 
to Martha not to mourn and here's why Pharaoh's army you drowned in the sea singing Mary and Martha don't you mourn listen if I could you know I surely would Oh, I stand I stand right where Moses stood Pharaoh's army They drowned in the sea Help me say Mary Help me call Mary You don't have to weep no more You can dry your weeping eyes Dry your weeping eyes Can I call a little louder Mary Mary can I say it a little louder? Mary, don't you weep. Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. I say, Mary, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, oh, Mary, you don't have to weep no more. You don't have to cry no more. Oh, Mary! Oh, Mary! Oh, Mary! To your sister, Martha, not to mourn. Come on, give the man a good God bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord one more time. <clears throat> Some of y'all still just now waking up and we almost through with church. Some of y'all still sleep. Let me tell you something. If you don't come here on fire, we can't light your fire. Amen. If, if, when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you, nobody ought to have to set your soul on fire you ought to come here on fire amen amen there is a word from God there is a word from God thank you men great job great job men great great job I know I'm not sister Linda Scaife and it's going to be hard to replace her amen uh, but I'll do the best that I can. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with us to the Gospel of St. Mark. The second chapter. Beginning with the first verse. <clears throat> 
The word of God says, and again, he entered to Capernaum. After some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. They come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of God. The grass withered and the flower faded thereof, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk this morning from the subject of faith that will not quit. A faith that will not quit. Thank you, ushers. A faith that will not quit. I want to say at the outset that many of us miss out on great blessings because we give up too quickly. Many of us fail to see great blessings come to pass in our lives because we too quickly abandon the journey. Many of you, if like myself, could attest today that you were in your childhood when you were first exposed to that word faith. Many of you could witness that you heard about faith long before you really knew what faith actually was. And the dictionary defines the word faith as a strong belief in someone or something. It goes on to say that this strong belief manifests itself in the byproducts of trust and confidence. And, and, and on that note, I, I'm inclined to agree with the dictionary for where there is true faith, there will be trust. Where there is true faith, there will be confidence. But the best known and the most famous definition for faith particularly is in Christian circles, comes not from a dictionary, but comes from this book called the Bible. In the book of Hebrews, we find the classic biblical definition for faith. And the writer tells us, now faith, now faith is the substance of things Hope for the evidence of things not seen. And then he goes on to tell us that faith, faith, somebody say faith, faith. plays a key role even in salvation. For he tells us those who would come to the Lord must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. 
He also tells us that faith is an important element when it comes down to our meeting God's approval. For he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Have I got a witness here? Jesus, the record tells us, was moved in the text by the unusual faith of a small group of men. The text opens by informing us that Jesus has come again to the city of Capernaum. And it indicates that he has obviously been there before. Amen? In reality, those of us who know the story are aware of the fact that Jesus came to Capernaum and really moved his base of operation finally to this city. And I begin to wonder why he would move from his hometown Nazareth and set up his headquarters in Capernaum. But he had some unpleasant experiences in Nazareth. He was met with hostility and he was the victim of scorn and ridicule in his hometown, Nazareth. He, he met with some hostility and he was the victim of scorn and ridicule in his hometown, Nazareth. And those aware of the report are cognizant of the fact that an effort was launched to take his life in the city of Nazareth. And as a result, Jesus moved his base of operation from Nazareth to Capernaum. And I think I ought to tell you, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that I've gleaned much from this ancient account. And one thing that I've gleaned among the many is this. That if things don't work out for you in Nazareth, don't give up on life. Did you hear what I said? Don't give up on living if things don't work out for you in Nazareth. Just keep on serving the Lord. Keep on walking in the path prescribed by his will. Amen. And, and there are those uh, here who can testify from uh, the platforms of your own personal experience that if you keep trusting in the Lord, help me hear somebody, if you keep serving the Lord and living for the Lord, when doors close are on you in Nazareth, God will open a door in Capernaum. Somebody know what I'm talking about. So Jesus had to move from Nazareth to Capernaum. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that, 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 that those folks in Capernaum were glad to have Jesus there. Nazareth's loss was Capernaum's gain. The stock rose all because Jesus was in town. They were glad to have him in town. He was, he was met with a warm reception in Capernaum. And many were the recipients of blessings all because Jesus was in town. Now it's all right to have some important Folks, now, did you hear what I said? I said important folks. It's all right to have some prominent prestige and wealthy, lofty folks in your city. But something is wrong if Jesus isn't in your city. It's all right to have folks uh, 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 of stature in your house but if Jesus is not in your house something is seriously wrong 
Amen. Jesus had come to Capernaum and the members, the citizens, was glad to have him in town. They grew accustomed to walking with him. They grew accustomed to talking with him. They, they grew accustomed to sitting in his presence and enjoy his fellowship. And many were blessed simply by the presence of the Lord being there. But the text, the text says, you still have your Bibles open, your apps open. Uh, Jesus had left the city for a while. And for a period of time, the master was not in Capernaum. And when you've grown accustomed to having him with you, God knows you miss him when he's gone. Have I got a witness here? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh uh, he, 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 he had to have left the city for a moment. And, and I, want, I want you to know today that it is quite possible to get hooked on Jesus. Do I have anybody in here today that's hooked on Jesus? And these folks have got hooked on Jesus. Are you with me? Things seem to go a whole lot better. When you get hooked on Jesus. And when you when he's not around, you go through withdrawal symptoms. Have yeah. I got a witness here? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 when, when he's not around, uh, it's something uh, uh, you, you, you go to feeding for Jesus. Come on, help me here, somebody. And I can tell when I'm not with him, and I can tell when his presence is not around. Because I, I don't feel like I ought to feel. So the Bible tells us that he, he had left the city for a reason. Y'all got a minute? But, but, but joy was again in the city. For Jesus had come again to Capernaum. And word got out that the master was back in town. And I got to wondering, and I got to wondering, uh, did the word get out? And, 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 and as much as they were not blessed with the modern conveniences of technology such as we have in our day. How did the word get out and get out so quickly? They didn't have television to, to televise the fact that uh, we got a special report coming. Jesus is back in town. No, 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 no. They didn't have cell, cell, cell phones. Sprint was not around. Verizon was, was not. AT&T was not around. Huh? They did not have a radio to broadcast the fact that he had returned. They did not have a daily newspaper to print and publish the fact that Jesus would be returning on tomorrow. So how is it that they came to learn of the master's return? I submit to you that somebody saw him. Amen. Somebody caught a glimpse of Jesus. And, 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 and I submit to you that it was it was news too sweet to keep to yourself. And, and, and that individual do just like some folks that tell everything. They went running. Jesus is back in town. They start running, telling others. And you know, I, I've discovered that if you want some news to get out, I'm going to say it the nice way. You got to have a telephone and tell a brother. I'll just leave it like that. Amen. And somebody, somebody got to tell him and circulate that Jesus was back in town. And the news was worth spreading. But you know I've discovered that there are some folks. Who get exhilarated and excited. And get in a hurry to spread bad news. 
Amen. 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 You want to find out what's going on? All you got to do is make one call. We got some folks around here that they better than News 9. Fox. Pastor McNeil. Fox, CBS, ABC ain't got nothing on them. You want to know what's going on? Just pick your phone up and say, did you try? Yeah, I heard. Let me tell you. They seem to get more excited to share bad news quicker than they will good news. We, we, we don't leave here telling that the Lord's presence was here. We don't leave here telling that God was in the place. We don't leave here telling that four souls came to the Lord. But we leave here telling, child, did you see her with him? Did you see him with her? Did you see what she had on? Come on, help me hear somebody. We, 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 we rather spread mess than a message. And, 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 we, and we, the word got out that the master was back in town. And it began to spread like wildfire. The Bible tells us that men and women came from all around the area to the small house where Jesus was. They all came wanting to be with him. Some came seeking healing. And they packed the house where Jesus was. And those who could not get in, they jammed packed the doorway, leaving no room for anyone else to get into the house by way of the door. Are y'all with me? And the Bible tells us there in that city uh, well, we are informed of a very sad case. We are told of a man who is not identified by name but rather his condition. A man who was sick and an alien from a condition called the palsy. Somebody read the story. And, and his condition had grown so severe until at the time of our text, he was rendered an invalid, unable to walk, unable to get himself to and fro. Have I got a witness here? And because he could not do for himself, he was dependent upon others to do for him. He was sick, I tell you, not, not just some meager uh, illness that two Tylenol and a good night's sleep can cure. Are you with me? Well, this man was seriously ill. Plagued with a condition that rendered him immobile. My brothers and sisters, I think I ought to tell you first what he didn't have. As a result of his sickness, he didn't have the ability to walk. Are you with me? Yeah. As a result of his feeble condition, he didn't have the ability to go to and fro. Because of his condition, he didn't have mobility and he did not enjoy some of the many privileges that you and I take for granted. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Uh, he was in bad shape, I tell you. And let me say to you, if you walked in this church today and you entered into this house of worship with a reasonable portion of health and strength, shame on you if you don't praise the Lord. I see some of you looking. I see some of you looking. I see how you're looking when you're looking. And you ain't doing nothing. And you ought to be giving God praise for being able to walk. You realize how blessed you are? Do you realize how blessed you are to wave your hands and tell God, folks, somebody ain't got no arms? I wish I had some real folks in here. Shame on you. Shame on you. If you walk in here and will not give God praise. Shame on you. Shame on you. 
If you won't wave your hand, shame on you if you can't shout about the goodness of God. This man didn't have many things. He didn't have many things. But now that I've told you what he didn't have, let me tell you what he did have. He did have, Sister McNeil, he did have some friends. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had some friends. Amen. He, he had some friends. Carry yourself, brothers and sisters, in such a way. St. James, do you hear me? Carry yourself in such a way that you can at least have some friends. When you hear folks talking about, I ain't got no friends, that's a bad indictment on you. Have I got a witness? Because the Bible says if you desire friends, you ought to show yourself. Quit walking around here mean all the time. Smile every now and then. Amen. If you ain't got 32, show the five that you got. Whatever you got. Just, just smile. Amen. And I tell you, I tell you, it's sad, brothers and sisters. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when you walk into the house of the Lord, and some folk come up in here looking as if though they've been sucking on lemons all night long. And they think that is that is uh, signified by how holy you are, by how. And I just told you last Sunday we ought to get better, not bitter. It's a sad testimony. To such a God that we serve. For us to look like we've been sucking on lemons all night long. We serve a God as good as we say it is. We ought to be able to smile sometime. Have I got a witness here? So he did. He did. Look at your neighbor and tell him he did have some friends. And I, I know he had some friends by virtue of what the group of men did. Amen. I wish I could tell you the, the, the maximum number of friends that he had, but, but I don't know the maximum amount of friends that he had. But I can at least tell you the minimum number of friends that he had. Are you with me? I know he had at least four. Amen. And if you and if you count that friend who's sticking closer than a brother, he had five. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Four men, according to the scripture, had serious concern about getting this man to Jesus. Now submit to you that they had learned, as well as many others, that the miracle worker was back in town. Huh? And they went to him in their dialogue with one another uh, go, went something like this here. They, they said, now, we don't know how long he's going to be in town. So whatever we're going to do, we better hurry up and do it. Come on, help me hear somebody. We, we don't know how long he's going to be in the city. He's in, he's in here now. And he's, so, uh, he's so often he's in, he's out. We don't know how long. So we better go and get him to Jesus. Let's get our friend to Jesus. So they, they went to the house of their sick friend. And I called him friend. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good here. I called him friend because they went to his aid in his time of need. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and listen and that's when you really find out who your real friends are <laughs> in your time of need let me tell you something the criteria for true friendship is not how many times you come to my house I don't want you at my house no every day Come on here, somebody. Yeah, yeah. You will live to discover that the person who is most often at your house can sometimes prove out to be your worst 
enemy. The criteria for true friendship is not frequent phone calls. For sometimes the person who most frequently engage in you in conversation might just have somebody else on the line. Come on, help me here, somebody. Sometimes it can prove to be that that that's person that calls you every day. See, you got to remember this here. And I'm just saying, this ain't no script. This is all script. You got to remember this here. If your business is in the street, that's a friend. It's a friend that tells your business. Why you say that, bull? Because you don't tell your business to your enemy. You tell your business to your friend. <laughs> so if your business is all out there, I don't know how they know. You better find out. Watch and see who you telling your stuff to. Huh? Huh? These men were his friend. And I know these men were friends because they put their agenda on hold. And went to the aid of their sick friend. And I could hear him saying one to another. Now brother, this won't be but a one way trip. If we can just get him there. And he would need, all he needed is just one way to get there. Have I got a witness here? After Jesus gets through him, he can walk back on his own. Have I got a witness here? So all we got to do is just get him there and Jesus will do the rest. Am I right about it? We're, we're, we're of the opinion that if we can just get him there, get him in touch with Jesus, if, if we can just get you hooked up with Jesus, everything will be all right. We are aware of the fact that you can't get there by yourself. You need some help to get there. You need some help to get to him. We, we've come to be your legs. We've come to be your feet. We've come to take you to where Jesus is. And oh, I can hear in my mind him talking to Jesus. We know that you sat. They say to this man, we, we know that you, you've been sitting here laying in this bed Day in and day out. Looking out of your door. Watching men and women as they walk by. With an instant. Uh, uh, with their legs. And, and you looking uh, at their feet. And their legs. And we know that you, you've watched them as they walk. you watched the pep in their step. you watched the glide in their stride. And we've come here to get you to Jesus because you we know in you in you there is a yearning and a hunger to be able to walk I want to know this morning is there a yearning in you to be able to see Jesus in your life I wish you could have been there or I wish I could have been there when they picked him up bed and all I thought I was ready, but I ain't quite ready yet, Brother Mill. I'm sorry. They start carrying him, start transporting him. Let me put it in this vernacular. They started toting him. Are you with me? To where Jesus was. They carried him bed and all. Come on, help me preach here. For so long this man had been a prisoner of his bed. He had been his, uh, in his, uh, this bed had been his place of incarceration. Confined Monday through Sunday into the bed. Regardless to the day, every time you go to his house, guess where he was? In the bed. They picked him up and started carrying him. And I'm glad that he had four friends because the bed, which in reality was a pallet, had four corners. Preach, boy, I'm trying. And, and, and for every corner, that was a friend. And for every friend, that was a corner. They all started carrying the corner. No, not one friend tried to carry the, the other friend's corner. Each friend, y'all know where I'm going with this. Each friend majored in carrying his own corner. 
preach, boy. I'm trying. Oh, brothers and sisters, as they, they walk in that hot sun to carry this man to Jesus, I'm sure sweat and perspiration drip from their brows, climb, climbing to carry this man to Jesus. I'm sure, brothers and sisters, that they kept on carrying him. They kept on carrying that corner. Well, in the church, there are many corners. And if you don't have a corner, it's not because there isn't a corner to be had. Somebody know what I'm talking about. There are many corners in the church. Somebody corner uh, may be on the usher board. Somebody else is going to preach, boy, I'm trying. Somebody else's corner may be in the choir. Somebody else's corner may be in the Sunday school. Huh? Somebody else's corner may be in the youth department, in the missionary department. But whatever your department, whatever your calling, carry your corner. Now hear me here, hear me here, hear me here, hear me here. If your corner is on the usher board. Don't be interfering and meddling with the choir. Carry your corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If your corner is in the choir, don't be agitating and aggravating the usher board. Carry. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, carry your corner. Sometimes the load is heavy. But just carry. Your corner. I'm figuring out that one of the things that is killing so many of us in the church is that there are so few who actually carry a corner. Each friend, each friend in the text had a corner. Now, out of all of the gospel of Mark details, there are some things that he doesn't tell us. Are you with me? There are some blanks. That he leaves. Unfilled. Mark doesn't tell us. How far. They carried him. Are y'all with me? We don't know whether they carried him two blocks. Or two miles. But we do know. That they carried him. Mark does not tell us how much the sick friend weighed. We don't know whether he weighed 100, 150, 200, or 350. But what we do know is they carried him. And brothers and sisters, as they carried him, periodically, I can hear them and see them in my mind as they look down at him. Those who were up front. And they said to him. You just lay there. And ride. Just lay there. It won't be long. And we're going to have you in the presence of Jesus. And once we get the two of you together. Everything is going to be alright. Oh I think I ought to tell you. I'm already getting ready to get across the field here. That they made into the house where Jesus was. Have I got a witness here? Yes. They made it to the house. And when they got there. They were met with the unexpected. They were met with the unanticipated. When they finally arrived. They saw that they could not get in. There was a problem in gaining access. For the entrance was crowded. Yes. And nobody was courteous enough to move out the way. Have I got a witness here? And that's one thing that bothers me about funerals. Some folk come in here and know that the side that the family is going to sit on and they calculate in their mind one, two, three, four, five, five rows ought to be enough. So I'm going to sit on this row 
And when they get to that road that you're sitting on, we just sit there. Won't even move. Did you hear what I said? And some of these folks at the house didn't have enough courtesy to move out of the way and allow this sick man that has his four friends up. Let him in the door. In that right church. And it's at this point that these men of faith begin to kick in. Did you hear what I said? For here they could have thrown up their hands and said to their friend, Oh friend, we're sorry. We tried to get you to Jesus. Oh, friend, we gave it our best shot, but we cannot get in. Do you, don't you see all of those folks up there at the house where Jesus is? And we cannot get in in that right church, but their faith begins to kick in in that right church. And they said to him, maybe on some future occasion, we'll have an opportunity to get you to Jesus. No, no, they didn't say that, but they said, I'll tell you what we're going to do, we're going to keep the faith, our faith will not allow us to quit in that right church, and they had in their minds, and they had in their hearts, where there is a will, there is a way. In that right church, they were possessed with a faith that would not allow them to give up. And oh, they decided that they would check around the side of the house. They couldn't find the way to get in the house. And I wish I could have been there. To see them uh, where they were circling around the house uh, looking for an access point. Uh, and they decided uh, that since they couldn't go through uh, the lower level, uh, come on, help me preach this thing. Uh, they decided uh, to explore the possibility of going up uh, in that right church. Uh, and the Bible says uh, they went up on the rooftop. In that right church, uh, and the Bible says, uh, is that when uh, they got up there, uh, they begin to tear uh, shingles off. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Uh, tear the shingles uh, back from the roof. Uh, you talking about audacity. Uh, you talking about tenacity. Uh, you talking about gumption. Uh, you talking about God uh, to tear a hole uh, in somebody else's roof. Uh, Did you hear what I said? Uh, it's sheer uh, audacity. But they were obsessed with getting their friend into Jesus. They tore a hole, tore a hole in the roof in that right church. And to them, they hosted their friend up from the ground to the rooftop. Do I have a witness here? When they got him up there on the rooftop, the record is that they begin to lower him down through the hole in the roof. And you know, I thought about it. I kind of got happy when I thought about that. Can I get a witness here? The Bible says they hosted him up to the top of the house and then they started lowering him down through the hole in the rooftop and I think I ought to tell you that the objective of that scripture is what to see their friend raise up their chief desire to see their friend get up from that bed but before 
he could be raised up. He had to be first lowered down. Did you hear what I said? And I'm here to let you know that some of us, we think too much of ourselves. And the Bible says, he that exalts himself shall be abased. But he that humbles himself shall, shall, shall be exalted. Did you hear what I said? And I want to let you know that every now and then you got to humble yourself so that God can raise you up in that right church. And the Bible says that they saw him coming down from the rooftop. And everybody eyes gaze up at the bed at the man coming down from the rooftop. But the record is, yeah, Lord, not only did the eyes of the people see the man, but Jesus, did you hear what I said? Jesus, he saw him, but Jesus didn't only see the man in the bed. The Bible says that he saw the men who had brought him there in that right church and he still sees men and women who help get other men and women to the house of the Lord say yes oh, yes yes he does can I get a witness here when he saw their faith Jesus was motivated when he saw their faith the record is Jesus spoke to the man in the bed of the palsy and said son thy sins be forgiven don't you hear him saying son rise take up thy bed and walk up in that right church rise take up thy bed and walk she could have been there uh, to see when uh, they heard the voice of the master uh, when he heard the voice of the master uh, there was something about his voice uh, that moved him uh, when he heard the master's voice uh, the man in the bed uh, started moving did you hear me? He started moving. His legs started moving. He got some feeling in his ankles. He got some feeling in his knees. Did you hear what I said? Step by step, inch by inch, foot by foot, and every round got higher. Every round got higher. Every round got higher. And I got a witness here. And I want to let you know that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, every round goes higher. Every round goes higher in that right church and I wonder sometimes how did the man that was delivered how did he react well I, I don't know all of that I don't know how he reacted but I know what I would have done had I been sick all of my life and the Lord finally healed my body I know what I would have done after he healed me I would have started skipping skipping praying in the Lord I would have been praying in him with my hand I would have been running telling of the goodness of the Lord with the Lord done anything for you you ought to pray him every chance you get if the Lord had many ways for you tell him thank you Tell him thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for me on my way. Thank you for the activity of my limbs. Thank you for being in my right mind. Yay! You got to have a faith. 
that will not quit. I don't care how bad it looks. Hold on. And believe that God can. God will. Make a way. Somebody know here today. He has made a way for you. When you were down and out, God made a way. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, hold on. Door to the Lord's house is open. Door to the Lord's house. A faith that will not quit. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. I'm growing more and more. Each day There are many Who started out with me Now They're going astray But I'm still Holding on I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his hand. Help me sing it. 